Good afternoon ladies and gentlemen, Guile here and welcome back to the Forge Delights Forever promotional series. It's 4v4, custom 4v4 I should say, action this afternoon, going down on the one, the only, the infamous Setton's Clutch, usually reserved for epicosity, of course, but that doesn't mean we are stuck in that particular format. We can experience different setups in the Setton's Clutch genre, and if you don't agree, well, tough luck, I'm in charge. <laughs> uh, we'll call this Team 1 up here at the top, and this Team 2 down here at the bottom, give our players some time, allow them to gate in and make our important introduction, starting with Oshiri in rearguard air position for Team 1 in regal purple. He is opening first land. Team member number two down at the cliffs down here. Going UEF, how terribly sensible. Going Fecal Brown, bless him, not so sensible. And uh, opening first air, interesting decision. Going second land and then building all of the T1 P gens you could possibly hope to shake a stick at. Look at that. Uh, a lot of mass to be had, of course, on Settens, so I imagine he will make use of all of that T1 power, but that seems a little excessive. Uh, answers in the comments section below if you see the merit in that. Team member number three for Team 1, another UEF, sensible decision for the causeway, certainly. It's Printer. There he is, Dijon Yellow, opening first land. And last but not least, for Team 1 over at the beach, it's another UEF, this time in combat green, it's Man on the Moon. There he is going first land, so three UEF and an Aeon for Team 1. Let's check out Team 2 now, starting with More Than a Jedi, going Cyber and Bless Him, opening first land in Mellow Yellow. Team member number 2. Up at the cliffs, considerably more Spartan on the T1P gen for this mirror on the other side of the map. It's VIP, also going Cybran in baby blue, going first land. Team member number three on the causeway, it's another Cybran. Could find him struggling a little bit against the UEF on the causeway if it gets into a, the usual ACU versus ACU scenario that you see on Settens. Anyway, he's going uh, Cybran, as we said, going electric blue, going double first land. And last but not least, down here at the beach, it's a UEF, it's Ferrari Red, and he's already left his base. It's Terrari, there he goes, and he went... First land going second air there next to the Hydro. So three Cybran and a UEF there for Team 2. Game quality at 93%. We're pretty darn happy with that as far as it goes. Not too bad for a custom game, certainly. Players to watch out for. Highest rated player in the game, Terrari 2400. He is the man to beat. And the other beach dweller on the other side, a 2000 rated man on the moon. Then we do have an 1800 in Accidental Aeon and a 2000 rated VIP at the two cliff sections. And the two Joes in play tonight, and these are proper Joes because these are global rankings, remember, this is not a ladder 4v4. We've got the 1200 at the top, but then a thousand down here. This is proper Joe stuff, at least by the stats as far as they're concerned. Uh, a thousand for more than a Jedi, and he's actually sub 1000 because, of course, these scores are all rounded up. So I checked beforehand, he's in the high 900s. So hopefully, he won't fall behind, he'll be able to keep pace with uh, everybody else and what's going on. But we've got some official harassment and abuse going on, labs coming in, in fact, going in both directions from the causeway players here. A couple of mech marines heading south from printer, and we've also got a couple of hunters which have bypassed it. Uh, the main base there of printer and look like they're heading deeper into team one's territory if we hold ye old shift key showing us all of the waypoints that is their intended tra trajectory as they go hunting for pull vulnerable units of build capacity little engineers this is steve hiding in the tree line ah uh, been discovered but is he going to turn around no he's not he's got more important things to do like knocking down trees there he goes there is a second one rolling through that is gonna bag the kill however so that little ng will not make it out alive so we've got transports away from both of the cliffs players working on grabbing the side islands we've got what looks like three ngs on the ground safely at the eastern side island but what have we got here an attempt at a drop all the way on the other side of the map from VIP but he's been spotted there was a scout plane out and a T1 interceptor covering this area as he dropped two engineers down here to get to work on a land factory and wisely he has dropped off his two engineers well aware that those two are not going to make it I'm guessing the intended target where it usually 
the intended target for early drops is to get yourself burrowed in over here and cause a problem at this side of things. We already saw there was a scout plane covering the potential LZ. That was where he was going. And now it's running some intel for this T1 bomber that has three kills to its name already. VIP doing some nice early harassment here against Man on the Moon. Has got himself a little friend, though. Gets the final payload away, though. And bags a kill on Cyril, who's on a cigarette break. Poor little chappy. Minding his own business. It never ends well. But look at this. Both of the beach players pulling their comms to get embroiled in the battle at the center of the map on the causeway. Marrow taking a lot of fire here. We've got three UEF ACUs and one Cybrin. Of course, the Cybrin is faring the least well. He starts with the least amount of HP, down to 4,200 hit points. Printer on the other team, the other causeway player, is faring a little better, but drawing fire from Terrari's comm. He's down to 4,400 hit points now as well, as some of Mantis come in from Marrow to alleviate the situation. There are some reinforcements heading in from Printer also, but they're taking a little bit longer to get there. Man on the Moon slowly backing up in conjunction with Printer, who's now gone into the red and really fallen behind in this little encounter as he's tried to tidy up these incoming Mantis. And look at that, almost down to a thousand hit points before he dips under the water into that top pond and back to a position of relative safety. Terrari and Marrow now get to work on scooping up some of the mass while intermittently firing at Man on the Moon's comm. Man on the Moon at about 10k HP. He's going to stop and scoopy scoopy some mass also. Where is Printer going now? Is he going after this final Salem wreck? Yes, he is. A lot of mass to be had there, of course. If you can get your hands on it, 600, no, 842? 642. I can't see, and I've just had my prescription changed. I think it's 642. Answers in the comment section below if you think I've got that right. Part of the problem with getting old, eyes, and just about everything else fails you in equal measure. But we won't talk about that. Uh, moving on, I was going to say something else, but I'm not going to. It's a family show, Guile. I'll leave you to infer what I may or may not have been thinking. I'd rather not comment. Inbound engineers, from they've gone all the way from their drop-off point. They have made it back to relative safety, and now I'm guessing will assist with construction works down here, which are proceeding nicely. Naval yards being put up at the little entrance down here and the island there for VIP. What have we got on the naval side of things over here for Team 1? Well, a little bit off the pace in conjunction or comparison with Team 2. We have got one operational naval yard and a second one under construction. Two or soon to be two at the beach as well, so he's on tempo there, and we have got three online for Man of the Moon, so maybe it will all even out. I say like he was falling behind over here, but he hasn't actually got one operational naval yard up. He's just started three all at the same time, but uh, certainly he'll need to get cracking with that. Man on the Moon will not waste any time, I'm sure. First frigate already off the conveyor belt for him. I guess he wouldn't really be producing or using conveyor belts much in naval production, but you know what I mean. Checking back in with the causeway now. Man on the Moon still holding the line there for Team 1. Printer still looking very peaky indeed. Did he manage to scoop the Salem wreck? We're not sure, but it's certainly gone. Who's done better out of reclaim so far? As a team, Team 2 have fared better. They're up 24k versus 17k. And that's probably down to them, broadly speaking, holding the field down here. And the moon, making sure he is still firing into this pack of Mantis, making sure they don't progress further up the causeway. And an upgrade on the way for Marrow, getting some nice assistance from his teammate here. Tech 2, he's at 34% and climbing. And the moon would love to get that cancelled if possible. But I don't think he's going to manage it somehow, not with two comms in situ. Of course, once that completes, Marrow will get a chunk of HP back as well. 47% done. And Man of the Moon forced to drop back. That will help them solidify control over the causeway. So, well done, Team 2. who are in the ascendancy here, up 6k so far in reclaim. And they are also up in generated eco as well. Oh, they were for a moment and then it fell off suddenly. No, Team 1 suddenly in the lead by a reasonable margin actually but behind overall in terms of total eco by about 
five or six K. So there we have it. How are our air players doing? More than a Jedi. Pulling in about 90 mass per tick. And Oshiri pulling in 90 mass per tick. Uninvolved, of course, in all of the fighting. They can sit back. They can tech up. They can get their economies running as they should. But uh, nice to see they're not falling behind things anyway. Considering uh, they are the only two Joes on the field today. Terrari slowly advancing forward. So Printer has dropped back. Hasn't got the T2 upgrade yet on his comm. I don't know if he'll go that way, but he has got some T2 engineers. So he's starting to work on some point defense up front. Man on the Moon drawing some fire, though, as a Cerberus turret completes back here. Are we going to get a point defense creep going deeper further to the northeast on this causeway, I wonder? There's the construction for the next one. I was actually saying in the Patreon cast yesterday, far be it from me to ever advocate for buffs for Cybran, but in the one case where I feel like they need it, I just feel like the Cerberus turret needs a little bit of a boost. Personal preference, you're free to disagree with me. I know they're not meant to be the turtley faction, but I think all factions deserve some kind of reasonable point defense, and there's no question that the Cerberus turrets, in my mind, are underpowered on that front. Don't let this particular encounter confirm what I'm saying. That was a 2v1 situation. Nicely placed triads there. Now it's a triad of triads. And maybe Maro needs to be a bit more conservative with his emplacements. Point defense creep has been abandoned and instead he's going to form a defense line a little bit further back. Presumably out of range, I would imagine, of those triads. Yeah, comfortably. They're only just able to reach. No, they're not. Maybe even. Maybe they're not even able to reach that one. Firing certainly seems to have ceased from those UEF turrets. How are the ponds looking? Well, there is some naval encounters underway, or there are some, I should say, down here towards VIP's base. Steady trickle of units heading in this direction. We've got an inbound torpedo bomber as well, so and on the moon has transitioned to T2 air. What have we got over here? Saucy little drop. Meant to make life difficult, but uh, Mantis not known for their structural killing capabilities. I think with the presence of that land factory there and currently spitting out labs, this is probably going to be safe against such an attack unless we get a much bigger commitment to the drop than a single skyhook. Arrow fully repped up now with that T2 engineering suite on board. Extra thousand hit points that gives him. Printer, Ooh, I like what I'm seeing here. Shield in operation. Area secured with point defense. And now he's not wasting time. He's going straight for artillery. Clink hammer about 66% done. So despite the early advantages from their encounter on the center of the causeway, Team 2 might need to yield a little bit of space here. Arrow well behind the curve on the base building. And once that clink hammer's online, he's going to have to try and get some shield coverage. We've also got that mobile missile fire. Yep. Flapjacks entering service on the front line for this UEF causeway player. That's going to be yet another thing to contend with. I think Marrow is going to have to yield this position before too long. Clink hammer online. And what have we got here? Tack missile launcher. Loving the mix here. The variation. Could probably do with a little bit of flak. And then he'll have all bases covered. Checking back in on the top pond. Man on the Moon's vessels, his flotilla of frigates harassing the T2 Naval HQ belonging to VIP there. But there are three Tech 1 torpedo launchers standing sentinel just on its perimeter. Ain't no how are they going to break through that with a handful of frigates, that's for sure. A nice little group of air superiority fighters now joining the party from Oshiri. 
We've also got some down here. Let's do a quick ASF count. Looks like Ashiri might be slightly ahead developmentally, unless there's been an air encounter that we've missed. Six air superiority fighters in service for more than a Jedi, and Oshiri with some 13. Of course, that, uh, as we said, depends on whether or not there's been an air battle that's gone Oshiri's way, which we missed. Accidental Aeon. Dropping back a little further. It's now plonking down a ton of T2 P gens underneath some shield coverage. Waste time with this tech, pesky Tech 3 business. Absolutely nonsensical, he says. Let's build a bajillion T2s. Courier inbound with labs. So we're going to get a bit of ghetto gunship play here. Potentially, there are some Sky Slammers in service on this side island. So. This isn't going to go without rebuttal. See, heading up towards these mass extractors. And there is the lab fire. No, he's not sticking with the ghetto gunship. He's going to make landfall with them. Courier will park just in range of the Sky Slammers to help keep their esteem up. Give them a free kill. Mass Extractor being tickled to death by six labs here. Sky Slammers, of course, can target the ground as well, so he delayed the response. Does manage to bag a T2 Max. Might grab the second. Losing labs fast, down to about 50% health. Down to just two now. No, sorry, there's a third one. Sneakily loitering right next door. Sky Slammers have absolutely abysmal targeting sensors. I guess they are primarily anti-air after all. But, uh... <laughs> it's terrible! Finally, they kill him and the uh, mass extractor survives with about 138 hit points. Wow. <laughs> that was, uh... quite the, uh, the show. It's the sort of thing. It's take your child to work day and then that's how you fare in front of them. You da do, Dad. I operate a Sky Slammer, darling. Can I see? Yes, certainly. I mean, on other days I do it better, but this is the general principle. And now we've got some expansion out of this forward outpost from Printer. T1 Spam taking advantage of the area that that click hammer has cleared. No kills yet for the Aloha tactical missile launcher. Just building up a stockpile of missiles. Pons pretty evenly matched so far. In fact, I'm not sure there's even been an encounter in the bottom pond between Terrari and Accidental Aeon. A lot more aggression coming out from Man on the Moon on Team 1. So far, VIP managing to hold. Loses a Salem there, however. The Barracuda inbound should finish it off. Nicely placed, or nice aggression, I should say. Naval yards for a man on the moon. But it looks like he's not going to be allowed to keep those. Advance RAS on the way for Oshiri. Already got the RAS and 24-25% done on that second upgrade. More than a Jedi pulling in 2-4-3. Oshiri off the pace by about 10 mass per tick. But the ARAS should see to that. So pretty even between the two Joes, the two air players. Terrarii. Oh, I keep wanting to say Terrarii. It's Terrarii down here, pulling in a very respectable 27289. Accidental Aeon pulling in 321. He really hasn't initiated anything down here. Instead, he has just sat back and he's just tooling up for the fight. Currently upgrading towards Tech 3 as we approach 20 minutes. don't often see this, though. 
in seconds. Usually there's the rush to deny. Maybe he's a little bit put off by Terari's ranking. Showing his opponent some respect and just going to try and out eco. Typically speaking, the cliffs have a mass advantage against the beach. So maybe that's his plan. Try to put off conflict as long as possible. And hope that your natural geographical advantage will win out. Salem's moving in. I can't believe he still hasn't cleared this area out. It looks like it is about to fall. Torpedo bombers adding to the resistance for VIP. That is a lot of air superiority fighters though. Oshiri slowly pulling ahead of his opponent in air. He's got 63 air superiority fighters. More than a Jedi has 30. I mean, that is not, it's not ideal. That really isn't. Let's have a look at how many air factories we've got. If I can. Wait, have I clicked on the right things? What am I doing here? That used to show me the number of air factories. It does. It's just I can hardly see it. It's snuck in in the corner there. Seven air factories for Oshiri. And more than the Jedi. And even just visually you can see taking a glance he's down at five so he is slowly falling behind you can see he's got lofty ambitions tons of air factories queued up as he should but he is definitely down on fighter numbers and that is causing problems for VIP because at the moment Oshiri has his fighters just parked here and it's giving breathing room to these torpedo bombers whose only inbound fire is coming off the pitiful frigates with their pea shooters that they might as well not even bother mounting on board. But it's not critical yet for VIP. I like what I'm seeing here. Cliff mounted SAM sites to assist and he's dropping a little battery of harms, T3 torpedo systems. That will create a very nice barrier, at least for the moment. While we're still in the mid-game before the real big fleets start making an appearance. What's the eco situation now in the bottom pond? So we've got 413 mass per tick for accidental Aeon. Terrari pulling in 400, so not that far behind. This is very much standard for these longer games now. Wasn't always the way. But uh, mass fabs flanking the mass storage, flanking the mass extractor. I'm wondering if we're going to see another rim of T2 mass fabs around these T3 gens but we're getting some movement now from accidental aeon he's pumped out a battle cruiser has a couple of bulwark ships further back this is a, a uef versus a uef fight but look at the sheer number of battle cruisers in production one two three four five out of six t3 factories we do have one two three four T3 factories over here and another one further to the east but uh, just more con conventional, more conservative build orders uh, and when those hit the water as they're starting to do now that could be a real problem for accidental Aeon serious firepower locked up in those battle cruisers Conflict on the causeway has completely ceased, as so often happens in Seton's games. And the torpedo bomber spam is getting worse for VIP. Man on the Moon has lost his midpoint naval yards. But 
the moment these vessels for VIP just hugging, being forced to hug the coast to benefit from these harms and these SAM sites. That is very cheeky loitering from Oshiri. VIP could definitely do with a few SAM sites just on the western pass there. Apologies if you can hear my dog barking in the background. I don't know what he's uptight about today. There's always something with that animal. Top bombers inbound from Oshiri managed to pick off the Naval HQ for VIP, and that will cause problems. T2 Naval Yards now stuck producing Tech 1 units. That is a major blow for Team 2's hopes on the top pond. And goodness gracious me, what have we got here? More than a Jedi he says, I'm sick of this business. And it's gone all cybern and got to work on a teleporter at 25 minutes in. That's pretty quick work for a cybern. But maybe feeling just a little bit outmatched here. He's obviously had a bad engage as well. Look at the number of ASFs. He's down to 17. Oshiri on 90. And uh, I guess this early in the game, they probably won't be expecting a Teddy snipe attempt. He's already got the laser as well, so he's almost ready to go. Oh, what have we got here? A ton of torp bombers. Well, why not? He's got de facto air dominance at this point. Heading out towards VIP's main base. And there's VIP and he is unshielded at the present time. About to work on a strategic missile defense. Is this 1200 going to pick off a 2000? Yes, he is. Very smart stuff. And down he goes. Teleporter complete and teleportation underway for VIP. Accidental Aeon vulnerable. He could be a target, but I'm guessing, yeah. He's going to go after his mirror. Team player for number one in control of air. And not anymore. He's not in control of his own bodily functions. And immediately afterwards, there's a counter kill. Just when it looked like... More than a Jedi was about to level the match. Marrow falls to, I guess, the same group of strap bombers that Ashiri had just used to pick off VIP. More than a Jedi has obliterated everything, crucially. Oh my god, and he hasn't gone home. He's gone straight after Printer. And Printer's going to go down. <laughs> Causeway player dead for Team 1. It's now a 2v2. Can more than a Jedi make it out alive peering through the nuclear fire he's got 10k hp left but there's not a lot of inbound fire you've got some governor cruisers here launching their cruise missiles they take a long time to get there he's rooted to the spot of course while teleportation is engaged drawing fire but he's gonna get out wow four players down inside a minute that is insane and suddenly this game has taken on a whole new dynamic. And there I was at the beginning saying, well, this might be the weak point for Team 2. Tele snipe attempt one after the other, both successful. He gets out alive, and now I'm guessing he's probably going to be teleporting home. That would have been just a quick click down here. Not seeing any gateway. Where's he going? Is he going for another attempt? Oh, there he is. 
going straight up into the middle territory, going after some extra air production facilities. He is air player after all, so it's what concerns him. He's activated withdrawal immediately, but there are tons of T1 bombers. This might have been a mistake. Has he bitten off more than he can chew? It's going to be very, very close. Lots more bombers inbound. Into the red he goes, but teleportation complete. He is going to get out and once again returns down here. That will be the end of it for now. Goodness me. 65 kills to his name. Fully five star. Two com kills under his belt. That was not an option, obviously. Accidental Aeon wasted no time in erecting those. We checked in on him when we were looking for the original exit point for his first snipe attempt. And none of these were in position yet, so he responded quickly. That's exactly the right thing to do. And uh, on the other side of things, man on the moon underwater. And the microwave laser doesn't work brilliantly underwater. A couple of disastrous early tests proved that. So, interestingly... I pondered whether or not this was going to be a bit of a slaughter earlier. The sheer number of Neptunes rolling off these factories, or floating off as the case may be. But it seems like Accidental Aeon has managed to get his hands on a fair few battleships. And some Bulwark Shield boats also. That single line of battle cruisers moving up to take on these summits. Lead summit getting absolutely vaporized. Down that goes. We do have some counterfire coming from accidental Aeons summits. I think it should be enough to at least maintain the status quo. Tons of riptides floating out onto the northern top pond. Man on the moon doing what he can to disrupt things. It's a very different picture though. Look how light he is on naval presence really has taken on a different dynamic with the demise of those two players. Man on the moon now in control of the causeway and the beach. And we don't have complete control over the left hand side. We have a division of control from VIP's assets. Although most of it of course has gone to Terrari the uh, only extra ones that have gone over to more than the Jedi seem to be these, maybe they were just these engineers. Has he built all of those, do you think? Well, he's certainly got a lot of build capacity over here. So it's possible. Inbound cruise missile fire pummeling the forward shield formerly of Marrow and that finally capitulates so the cruise missile is going to be able to break through and start damaging the buildings there are a lot of zappers here yeah there goes the shield that will probably represent the end of that forward position over there unless these governors are sent on further to the south 33 minutes down bottom pond looks like it's going team one's way top pond looks like it's going the other way man on the moon taking some fire from subs that's not a great place to start an upgrade he's going for shield no 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 what are you doing well he knows better than me he did get down to around 4,000 HP, but there was enough torpedo presence from these launchers to keep him safe. Had me worried for his longevity for a moment. Look at that. 
Cybran revenants moving out en masse from more than a Jedi. Who's uh, more like a, a ninja than a Jedi in this one so far. That is the view from Team 1 and they have stealth activated. See the Omni line there. Everything should be visible as extra signatures but not with that stealth that those pesky Cybrans have on board their planes. Where will they be headed now I wonder. We've also got Torp Bombers in the top pond and remember Man on the Moon is in the pond himself although he's managed to get a shield upgrade and he is just moving the comm out of the water now probably sensing the inbound danger but what I like about this Man on the Moon immediately responds to kill the torpedo bombers but that has left Accidental Aeon wide open and he's only got a basic T2 shield gen covering his comm. And the final bomb on that first run finishes him off. And now the strats are going to immediately move over here. But what are you doing? No! Why would you go there? He went for another tele-snipe attempt against Man on the Moon. But there was so, <laughs> so many battle cruisers just sitting off the shoreline. His life expectancy was about three nanoseconds. Terrari now in full charge of all of Team 2's assets. It is now a 1v1 versus Man on the Moon. Oh, but he doesn't probably doesn't want to be there. I don't know. I've given up making assertions about where people should be. Funnily enough, everybody has been in their base bar more than a Jedi when they've died. Literally no one has died except for him outside their own base so far. And Man on the Moon going to be any different, I wonder. Still arguably in his base, certainly in his base harbour. Air control firmly with Terrari. Strap bombers harassing the naval yards. Terrari's con pretty damn safe. He's just spamming up buzz kills for the time being. He's got a nice naval buffer in between his com and the threat. What have we got over here? Lots and lots of anti-air trying to persuade these air forces to move out. Attack ping on man on the moon who's exited the water now and is heading inland. His engineers hurry to build more air defences. 36 minutes gone. Another T3 naval yard gone. Man on the Moon slowly losing his grip on naval production up here. Wonder where he's headed. Just inland. No plans beyond that. Just wonder what on earth, if anything, can he do at this point. He has rebuilt the facilities in the air position back here. And he is pumping out restorers. But it does feel like he is behind in the air game. Look at the sheer number of air facilities. He's got all of those. He's got all of them in the backfield, of course just doesn't have the production capabilities and if you look at eco well the story tells itself 2.1k for terrari 1.3k for man on the moon never really recovered from those tele snipes it set them back they happened so fast completely changed the dynamic of this game Cormorants being pumped out to attack naval facilities and vessels. A slow encroachment of just mass trident frigate spam. It really is 
the order of the day. Combination production between ASFs and torpedo bombers. Lots and lots of support commander spam underway. Trying to maximize eco production. Let's just see what they are. Yeah. RAS preset support commanders. That top pond bay area for man on the moon. Looking decidedly shaky. Three galaxy class battleships in the rear. Frigates absorbing all of the fire. Group of restorers. Just loitering off the edge of the field. Can't get stuck in. Having to try and bait these ASFs to draw them closer to all of this anti-air, which there is a lot. Sheer number of anti-air. 20 SAMs there. 31 T1 anti-air. 25 flak. Man on the moon has made his way to the central lake. But he can't feel good about where this is going. He's dropped back in the bottom pond. Anything looking like we're going to have some kind of causeway attack? Not really. Neither player seeming remotely concerned. It's all naval and air production for the time being. And his horde of ASFs, Tarari, his air wing dropped back. And that's allowed the restorers to come out and try and thin out this constant flow of trident pressure. Rari deciding whether or not to engage. Looks like he might go for it. AA Restorers do their best to contend. Flak on the shoreline opens up. Now we... Is that the first experimental we've had? Tarari's built an experimental somewhere. <laughs> and it's a Scathis. I think that's the first experimental we've seen in-game at 40 minutes and it's a freaking Scathis. Every game is different in Sopcom. This one, doubly so. Volley away. Looks like it's targeting air production facilities in the rear. Sensible decision. I like it. And now the ordnance is going to start falling. How will Man on the Moon respond? I'm not sure he can, to be honest. Still 10k per tick behind in mass production. Not 10k, we've talked about it. it's a whole k 1k. Factor of 10 out, good one, Guile. Uh, and there's just no way he can defend against it. That is all going to be wiped out. Next will be the shoreline bases. And then the causeway. And there's even a second Scathis under production. All build capacity in the backfield, bar one or two loitering outside. It's pretty much dead. And there's a Control K capitulation from Man on the Moon who knew he was done. What a weird game! Very, very weird game, but uh, closed out nicely in the end by Terrari. But do you know what? MVP, and I hate, I, I absolutely hate having to do it because you should never reward cybern, cybern scumbaggery and tele snipery. It should just not be done. But credit where credit's due, more than a Jedi who is a 950-60-something player playing in a game with several or at least three 2,000-rated players, an 1,800. He took out two of them and crippled. He was hit. Not only did he manage to bag a kill and straight away on a Shiri, but he also wiped out all air production 
back here. And as we saw in the later phases of the game, that was absolutely crucial. So credit where credit's due. He is my MVP for the day. If you don't agree, do tell me who would be your MVP. Let me know down in the comments. And uh, if you feel so inclined, guys, a little bit of self-promotional work on my part. Uh, don't forget, we have a premium channel with premium ad-free content. They have some, we have some 92 ad-free casts on the premium channel on Patreon. It's a mere dollar a month that also gets you access to Discord. So do please go and check that out. It's the best way to support me if you like the content. But until next time, stay well and stay safe. This is Guile, signing out.